We recently got a set of second gadgets, and that means that Terra, Tick, Poco, and Mr. P have a complete kit with two gadgets and two star powers. Hello, fellow brawlers. I'm Kyra Simon. It's time to brawl. For today's video, we're going to quickly review the brawlers' gadgets and star powers, and after that, I'm going to talk about their best builds for two main reasons. First is to give you guys that competitive advantage, and second is to know which gadgets and star powers you guys should prioritize saving your gold for. With that said, I want to give a friendly reminder that it's typically best for you guys to save your gold for upgrades and hope for lucky gadgets and star powers powers and boxes, but you know, there's no shame on spending that gold on a gadget or star power that you really want your hands on. By the way, I'd appreciate it if you guys subscribed if you haven't already, and don't forget to show your support by using code Kairos in the Brawl Star shop. Doing both of those things go a long way in helping support my channel and uh, helping me do the things that you guys love, you know, making videos for you guys. And you guys know what else helps me make the Brawl Stars videos that you guys love? Sponsors. I wanted to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Blade and Soul Revolution. Blade and Soul Revolution is a martial arts themed MMORPG coming to mobile in the next week or two. Now the game is going to be completely free to play so click on the link in the description below to pre-register so you can join the fun as soon as possible. There are five different character classes including the Blade Master, Kung Fu Master, Destroyer, Summoner, and Force Master. Now I've had the opportunity to test out the Force Master who uses long range skills of fire, lightning, and ice to subdue their opponents. Each character has over 30 special attacks to learn and there are even joint attacks where players can combine attacks with other players, which actually really comes in handy in PvP. And PvP is a core part of the game's experience. When you first start playing, you'll be asked to join one of two elite factions, which will have a big impact on your game experience. Faction Wars pits up to 500 players against each other in a massive battle, which is absolutely crazy. But there are also 2v2 and 1v1 battles where you're in complete control of the outcome of the battle. Click on the link in the description below to pre-register for Blade and Soul Revolution. And once again, I wanted to give a huge thank you to them for sponsoring this video, and I also wanted to thank you guys for watching this, because sponsors make it possible for me to make the videos that you guys really love. Okay guys, first let's talk about Terra's abilities and her best build, and then we'll talk about Tick. Terra's newest gadget is Support From Beyond. She surrounds herself with three shadows that attack enemies and disappear after six seconds. Each shadow has only 1,000 health, which really isn't a whole lot against an enemy that can deal splash damage to all three, but against an enemy that can only deal damage to one target at a time, like B or Piper or even Colette, this gadget can absolutely act as an easy defense that will force the enemy to back away or or help Terra win a 1v1 situation. In fact, in the perfect situation, Terra's shadows can deal up to 13,500 damage before their six seconds are up. That is more than enough damage to take out every single brawler in the game. And because of this, enemies have to deal with the shadows in some way. They might choose to clear them with a quick attack, or they might just run away, but they have to do something about it, which is why this gadget is so strong. Now, whenever Terra uses this ability, she has one shadow spawn below her and two spawn above her to the left and right. One incredibly useful trick is that if Terra has a single tile wall above her and she's standing right next to it when she uses this gadget, the two shadows above her will spawn on the opposite side of the wall, which you can use to really catch the enemy off guard. This doesn't seem to work if the wall is to Terra's side or below her. Now, Terra's original gadget is Psychic Enhancer. This ability allows Terra and her allies to see enemies even if they're inside the bushes or invisible for four seconds. This is a really straightforward gadget, but it is incredibly strong on maps with lots of bushes. Terra's first star power is Black Portal. When Terra uses her super, a shadow appears from her super that attacks her enemies. It has 3000 health, and its base movement speed is actually faster than every brawler in the game, which means that enemies must deal with it eventually. It also deals 800 damage for each attack, which means that it cannot be ignored for long. This offers a fair amount of offensive power and also causes enemies to waste ammo. It can even save Terra because enemies will oftentimes auto-aim on the shadow instead of at Terra. Terra's second star power is Healing Shade. Instead of an offensive shadow appearing from her super, she summons a healing shadow instead. This shadow has 600 less HP than the other, but it actually heals just as much as the offensive shadow deals damage because it heals 400 HP twice per second. Now the shadow will follow the closest friendly brawler who does not have max HP and it will continue healing until the enemy team gets rid of it or until Terra uses another super. So what is Terra's best build? I honestly believe that healing shade is the better star power 90% of the time. The healing that it provides is insane because it can even heal faster than Pam's healing turret plus it will follow you or your teammates wherever you need to go. As for Terra's gadget, I definitely think that her support from beyond gadget, the newest one, is the better 
better option by a long shot. Now, if you're playing a really bushy map, though, I prefer her Psychic Enhancer gadget. Everywhere else, though, I prefer her newest gadget, and that's why I think that Terra's best build is her support from beyond gadget with her Healing Shade star power. Then, of course, when it comes to skins, my personal favorite Terra skin is Street Ninja Terra. Next, let's talk about Tick's abilities and best build, and then we'll cover Poco. Tick's newest gadget is Last Hurrah. When Tick activates this ability, he becomes invulnerable for one second, and after that, he explodes, deals 1,000 damage to any enemies close to him, and also knocks them back. This gadget provides insane value, and I fully expect it to be nerfed in the upcoming future because it covers all of Tick's weaknesses when it comes to close range combat. He can't take damage for an entire second, then he deals damage, plus enemies that get hit by Tick's explosion get knocked back up to three tiles away, which means that even after his shield is gone, he's going to be plenty far away from anyone close to him so that he can just attack him from a distance. Tick's original gadget is Backup Mine. When Tick activates this gadget, he makes a quick dash in the direction that he is moving and leaves a mine on the ground where he was. This gadget is honestly inferior to Tick's newest gadget in almost every way, which is why I'm expecting it to get buffed if his last hurrah gadget does not get a nerf. The one situation where I'd rather have Tick's Backup Mine gadget instead is if I was in a race with Tick for some reason. Tick's first star power is Well Oiled. With this star power equipped, Tick heals two seconds faster than normal when he doesn't take damage or attack. It normally takes Brawlers three seconds to start healing, and that means that Tick starts healing after only one second. Now, Tick normally takes three seconds to fully unload and reload one ammo, which means that if Tick is attacking as frequently as possible, he's still gonna have plenty of time in between attacks to heal up a little bit, which is actually crazy helpful. Assuming that he's consistently taking damage, and this is exactly why in Tick versus Tick situations, the Tick with this star power equipped will almost always win because they'll be able to maintain high health in between attacks. Tick's second star power is Automatic Reload. Now, Tick has the slowest reload speed out of all of the brawlers in the game, but with this star power equipped, his reload time is 9% shorter, which makes his reload speed similar to Barley's, Penny's, or Terra's reload speeds. It is still a slow reload speed, but it really helps Tick feel a lot more viable. So then, what is Tick's best build? The choice between gadgets for Tick is a no-brainer. At least until some balance changes happen, Tick's last hurrah gadget is a better option by a long shot. As for his star power, like I said, if you're playing Tick and you know that the enemy team is going to have a Tick on it, Well Oiled can be a better option, but typically, Tick hides safely at a distance behind walls, so if you're not facing a long range thrower, his automatic reload star power is the better option. And that's why I think that Tick's best build is his last hurrah gadget with his automatic reload star power, and of course, my favorite Tick skin, Snowman Tick. Now let's cover Poco's abilities and his best build, and then we're going to talk about Mr. P. Poco's newest gadget is Protective Tunes. When Poco activates this ability, there are two things that happen. First of all, any active adverse effects from himself or friendly brawlers in a large radius are completely removed. These adverse effects include poisons, stuns, slows, and other unique status effects like Byron's first star power that causes opponents to receive less healing for a period of time. The second thing that happens is that Poco and teammates that are affected by this ability actually become immune to adverse effects for the next second. Now, they're not immune to damage, but they cannot be slowed, stunned, or poisoned for the next second. One thing to note is that Poco cannot activate this gadget if he's already stunned, which means that you're going to have to time this ability right before he gets stunned to make sure that it doesn't happen. Poco's original gadget is Tuning Fork. When Poco activates this ability, Poco and enemies within a close radius start to heal 400 health per second for 5 seconds. That's a total amount of 2,500 health, which is actually pretty solid for a gadget, especially because Poco can use this for his whole team. However, the healing does not start until a whole second after the ability is activated, which means that this ability is best used in preparation for incoming damage instead of in response to damage. In other words, it's not a burst heal, it's a very, very slow heal. Poco's first star power is Decapo. With this star power equipped, Poco's attacks can now heal friendly brawlers for 700 health. This means that with three quick attacks, Poco can heal teammates for 2,100 health on top of his other healing abilities. Abilities. And if teammates are bunched up with enemies, Poco will not only heal his teammates, but deal damage to enemies with a single ammo, which is crazy strong. This star power pretty much gave birth to one of the most broken combos in the game, Poco Double Tank 
which can actually be strong in nearly every single 3v3 mode and even map. Poco's second star power is Screeching Solo. This star power allows Poco's super to deal 800 damage to enemies as well as heal himself and teammates within the range. This star power's biggest use is the fact that Poco's super has an incredibly large range and it can attack through walls which can help Poco finish off enemies. So what is Poco's best build? The one thing that's kind of tricky with Poco's newest protective tunes gadget is the fact that its usefulness is entirely dependent on what brawlers the enemy team is playing. Also, really good timing. If the enemy is playing a Frank or other brawlers with lots of adverse effects, Protected Tunes is the better gadget. But if they're not playing a brawler like that, Poco's Tuning Fork gadget is the better option. Now, because you rarely know which brawlers the enemy team is going to bring with them, I recommend almost always going with Poco's Tuning Fork gadget. As for Poco's star powers, I think Decapo is by far the best ability, unless you're playing Poco in Solo Showdown where it's useless. With all things considered, I think his best build is his Tuning Fork gadget, his Decapo star power, and at least for now, I prefer his Poco star skin, but I'm honestly kind of looking forward to him getting some better skins. Now it's time for Mr. P's abilities and best build. Mr. P's newest gadget is Porter Reinforcements. After he activates this ability, the next attack will spawn an extra Porter wherever the attack lands. With this gadget, Mr. P can actually have up to four Porters on the field at once, but chances are the enemy is going to take them out, so that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> if Mr. P's attack doesn't hit a wall or an enemy, or he doesn't have his Handle with Care Star Power equipped, the Porter will spawn at the end of the normal attack range. But if his attack range does get extended, the Porter will spawn at that extended range. Honestly, this ability is really great at helping deal damage to enemies that are far away, and it can be a solid counter against throwers who have a hard time dealing damage up close. It's also a pretty decent counter against enemies like Piper or B or Colette because they deal single target damage and it wastes their ammo. Mr. P's original gadget is Service Bell. When Mr. P activates this, his current Porter on the field is given two buffs. Its damage is increased by 150 damage, which is a 41% damage buff, and its health is increased by 1000, which is a 51% health buff. That's a total of 2,960, which is actually pretty significant. I think my favorite time to use this ability is right before the Porter is about to die, because this gadget will also completely heal the Porter to max health. And that's even if the Porter only has 100 health left. This could be really surprising to enemies and has actually led for me getting some funny kills, because the enemy totally underestimates the Porter's health. Mr. P's first star power is Handle with Care. With this star power equipped, Mr. P's attacks bounce further, even if they don't hit an enemy or an obstacle. This is a really simple star power that greatly improves Mr. P's range. Mr. P's second star power is Revolving Door. With this star power equipped, Mr. P's porters will respawn three seconds faster than normal after they're taken out. Now it normally takes four seconds for them to spawn, which means that another porter will spawn only one second after the last one was taken out. Believe me when I say that this star power is underrated. Having a consistent flow of porters on the field is an absolute pain to deal with for the enemy team and can really turn the tide in your favor. But what is Mr. P's best build? When it comes to Mr. P, neither gadget is particularly game breaking. They're both annoying and surprising to the enemy team, and I think you can honestly go with either one. However, I personally like Porter Reinforcements more for two reasons. First of all, you can use it whenever you want without having to wait for a Porter, and also you actually can't activate Service Bell if Mr. P is too far away from a Porter, which makes it a lot less useful. As for Mr. P's star power, I really meant it when I said that his Revolving Door star power is a lot better than you might think. That's why if you're playing Mr. P on a map with a lot of obstacles where he's speaking to be able to get that bounce shot where he doesn't need a lot of additional range, it is definitely better to use his revolving door star power to get more porters on the field faster. If you're playing Mr. P on a very open map with fewer walls, his handle with care star power is the better option though. Overall, I think that this is Mr. P's best build. His porter reinforcement gadgets with his revolving door star power and the only skin Mr. P currently has to offer is Agent P. There are four other brawlers that got a second gadget in this update and if you if you want a video where I go over their best builds, please let me know in the section below. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate you guys subscribing and using code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop. For now, guys, this is Kairos. I'm ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.